Hi, I'm going to talk a little bit about privilege and also mix in some other stuff around my transition in there. I don't really have a script. I'm just speaking from my gut and from my heart. Uh, the other day I had a Facebook friend who uh, had also been supportive um, early on of my transition and supported different work that I was doing in, in my ministry. Yeah, it really upset at me. And uh, just to give some context, I have to fundraise a lot. Um, I fundraise for a nonprofit, the Center for Prophetic Imagination. I, I really hate fundraising, to be honest. It's very hard, and I have a lot of shame around money stuff based on how I grew up um, and some different kind of traumatic experiences that I don't, don't want to go into right now. Um, but I also have fundraised for some surgical stuff. I, I fundraised a little while back for uh, skin removal because I had bariatric surgery a couple years ago and so I had excess skin and I was encouraged to raise funds for that. And people really supported that, which is so amazing. I was able to get um, what would be called a tummy tuck. But for me, it wasn't just out of vanity. There's, there's other issues involved there, why it seemed important to me. But then I also have fundraised for my transition. So that's a lot of fundraising. And fundraising is irritating as hell if you're getting bombarded by asks, which a lot of people are this time of year. But it's also irritating as hell for me to have to ask because it aggravates all the shame. Well, anyways, this Facebook friend um, basically uh, suggested that I'm kind of a bit of a huckster. I'm begging too much. Um, if, you know, like, it seems wrong to raise money for a transition um, in a world where there's real problems. That's kind of the idea. And I've gotten that before. I had someone else who was also a long-term Facebook friend and who was also very leftist shame me. Uh, basically insinuating that I'm, my transness in raising mon money for a transition is kind of a bougie thing. All this has to do with privilege. And so I want to unpack that a little bit. The privilege of someone to be able to gender transition in our society. Now, first off, I there are societies, there are countries where this sort of thing is just covered by a national health system. And so the idea of it being considered a privilege doesn't factor in because it's considered part of a slate of health options that are provided, given the right conditions. In our society, we have this weird thing where there's certain kind of necessary things. And then there's sort of like luxury health care, like getting glasses or having anything done with your teeth besides just yanking them out, which, to be fair, I have... I'm missing a tooth here, I'm missing a tooth here, I'm missing a tooth here. Because my insurance at the time, which I was on Minnesota Care, which is basically like subsidized health care for a while, um, didn't doesn't cover anything besides yanking teeth out. So some people raise funds for those sorts of things. And then there's a the stuff that has to do that people think of as cosmetic. And, Gender transition stuff uh, falls into that. Although insurance, some insurance companies will cover basically having your penis removed, <laughs> like, and having a, a vagina put in. But anything between here and there, which most trans uh, feminine people I know, that's not their big concern. It's other things. Well, anyways, it's not covered, so it's considered sort of like plastic surgery. And a lot of people treat it like that. And so then, in their mind, they think of it as luxurious, as luxury. It doesn't feel like a luxury to me. And I doubt it would feel like a luxury to anybody else. Now, but it's me being able to do it is still a privilege, though, because I have access. I don't have the money myself, but I have access to funds by fundraising because I have a, a platform. And I have no doubt that part of the reason I was able to build that platform is because I am an educated uh, which is one type of privilege, um, minister type, 
another type of privilege, Christian privilege. Um, until recently, people would have assumed I was a man, another type of privilege, and I'm white. Those privileges gave me access to fundraising. Now, I haven't raised enough to cover all my transition, but the fact that I can start doing any of it, like laser, hair removal, electrolysis, uh, vocal therapy, um, the fact that I can do that is a privilege. Now, to then go into this logic, though, that if I'm using raising money for that, instead of raising money to feed the hungry, that I'm basically being a selfish piece of shit, it's like, well, there's there may be some truth to that. But it's interesting to me that the people who say that, who've been accusing me of that, are not destitute people. They're people who do things like vacations or own homes. So oftentimes this level, this charge of privilege is thrown at people in a hypocritical way to mask the fact that they're just transphobic as fuck. They just don't think it matters. So if I my car broke down, which also happened recently, um, but we were able to pay for that. It wasn't as much as I was worried it'd be. And I had to fundraise for a new car. They might not as assume that I'm being a privileged piece of shit about it. Why? Because that's normalized and acceptable. If I was raising funds for education, again, another area of privilege. It's, the thing is, we can all, like in our society, anyone who is above destitution should ask at some level how they prioritize their spending of money. But it is interesting to me, this charge of privilege comes up specifically around transness. As though, and there's this perception that trans identity somehow is tied in with bourgeois values. Why is that? There's lots of reasons. Part of it is because trans people are generally invisibilized, except for the high profile examples like Laverne Cox or... Uh, Caitlyn Jenner, or other people who like enter the public uh, like, sphere, and those are affluent people. Never mind that most trans people aren't like that, and that transness is <laughs> crosses the social spectrum. In fact, there's a disproportionately high number of homeless people are trans or non-binary or genderqueer in some way, and that this isn't just a white issue. Another reason why this becomes kind of an issue around privilege is because there's a sort of class essentialism thing where anything that focuses on any sort of revolutionary struggle or leftist analysis that isn't centered around uh, critiquing capitalism is seen as distracting away from the core. Like, it's uh, usually, you know, upset Marxists who feel like that's the analysis. And some of them, because of the the weight of obviousness in public discourse now around police brutality, a lot of them have made space for race analysis. And it's easier to see how race, or at least it's easier to see for them, how race intersects with class. But this stuff around queerness doesn't. Partly, uh, partly for a lot of reasons, but part of it because like uh, corporate sponsorship, of pride and stuff, and then because... Uh, gender and sexuality stuff cuts across class lines. Uh, it's just hard for people to wrap their brain around the fact that a category of people that includes the rich could be uh, oppressed. Well, that that's true uh, with different racial groups and ethnic groups. But there's been a lot of work done on on that in public discourse, but not around transness and queerness. There's also this mistaken idea that somehow it's trendy because young people are realizing, you know, uh, you know, you hear stories about kids in middle school um, wanting to change their pronouns and maybe shifting a lot more than uh, feels comfortable for some folks. So anyways, it ends up being this sort of thing where it seems trendy and bougie and all that. And that's bullshit. 
Then you bring in this other angle around sexual repression, because this is the United States of America and puritanical uh, sexual ethics dominate. Uh, you end up with this soup of shame, resentment, uh, misperception, uh, the idea that it's all about vanity and mere comfort, and all this truth about uh, the way in which being trans uh, causes uh, discomfort and shame, that it's often a, <laughs> if you are have gender dysphoria and you don't transition, your suicide rate is a lot higher than everybody else. The idea that violence, sexualized violence, statistically, if you're a trans feminine person, you experience it more. All that stuff gets pushed aside, and all the class links and economic links get pushed aside. And so then instead of it being me transitioning as a part of my need for health care, and that my discomfort isn't about I feel less pretty than I want, and so I want to have people pay to make me look pretty, you know, that sort of rhetoric um, slips in. And uh, people don't recognize this is for my, my health, that I've lost family, that there's times I feel afraid. I was at a bar recently, um, and uh, the, there was a man at the bar who I was with a, a cis woman friend, and he was kind of checking us out. Then I started speaking, and it's like, oh, it's a dude. And then he got very playfully aggressive with me and then the men around me were like hitting me and stuff like but in a friendly way but it kind of sometimes turned gross and I felt anxious and then after we left the bar I had a man basically verbally come at me uh, talking about Dave Chappelle um, and how people don't can't take a joke anymore and want to know if I was one of those trans people who could take a joke and so this is that might seem like no big deal but this is a lot of assault starts this way. So there's a lot of layers to this. So the idea of just boiling it all down to the fact that I have privilege as a way of dismissing my experience, uh, making it seem frivolous, and um, just generally shitting on the trans experience as some sort of trend, that's really painful. At the same time, I do have privilege. I mean, there's a reason, and maybe I could do more, like, and I have schemes and dreams of doing more. Um, I mean, everything I raise for my transition, I'm earmarking 25% of it to support the transition of someone else who has less access. And for me, that's, that was, it might not seem like a lot, but it was hard for me because, you know, I make less than $30,000 a year, so it's not exactly like, um, I was doing that from a place of abundance. And I have dreams, like, I want to find a way to raise funds for people's transitions and prioritize trans people of color and prioritize the, the safety and rights of trans people in, in, at an international level. It's something I'm thinking about, but, you know, I find, like I said, I fundraise for a lot of things and I have to figure out the best way to get at that. So let's just say privilege is real. I have it. But I don't have it because of my transness. Any privilege I have has to do with the privilege that I already had before my transition. And in fact, being trans limits my... It, it takes away privilege. I've had some dumb shits say like, wow, you're more marketable now because you're trans. Now, I will say being trans makes me more interesting. But it's not like I'm going to get a sweet, sweet gigs because there's because somehow churches in general, which is kind of more my bread and butter, um, like are like we don't like having white men speak in places. We need to get some trans feminine people speaking. That's not really a conversation that happens a lot, and in the places it does, those are usually organizations with limited budgets. Look at the richest, most powerful, affluent. Uh, denominations, churches, networks, organizations, they're still white men dominated. No one's beating down my door to have me speak. 
and in the and then every once in a while you do get someone who is queer trans um, who gets a platform but they're the one who gets it that's kind of how tokenize it tokenism works so I, I want to push back against this narrative of privilege I can own my privilege but my privilege has nothing to do with my transness because I bring privilege into the trans experience and into my transition there's an obligation that comes with it but the stupid linking of bourgeoisness and affluence and privilege with transness is stupid as shit and i'm not gonna tolerate it anymore i'm not going to there's nothing wrong with anybody who's transitioning who can't afford it to ask for help because it's a medical need it's important for their mental health and also for their physical health dysphoria is fucking real I didn't realize how much of my mental unhealth was tied up with this. And I didn't realize how much my physical health, my hatred of my body, was causing physical ailments until this process. It's become very clear how it's all interconnected. This is a matter, and this is not melodramatic, for my survival. I've had suicidal moments. My hatred of my body caused all sorts of bad habits. And you could say, you could make it about character and say that I was just weak. But fuck that. I'm trans. And me experiencing a transition to help me feel comfortable, not in some sort of like eh, comfort way, but like deeply at home in my body, is a matter of my survival. And it's even more so for others, like there's some people who have dysphoria way more intensely than I do. Everyone should have access to this sort of health care. There's no shame in asking for help if you can't afford it. And if you have privilege while you do it, try to share. Anyone who still wants to shame you for that can go fuck themselves. Merry Christmas.